Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, and today's quick tip is to not avoid soreness. Why would you avoid soreness? Well, maybe you've heard some things about how soreness is bad and or irrelevant to gains. So people will say shit like, stimulate, don't annihilate. They'll say, well, you know, soreness is just a symptom of novelty, which is a fun one I always like to laugh at. And they'll say, you know, as a personal training contest, they'll be like, look, if I get my clients sore, they'll just bitch and then they'll quit and I won't make any money, which is kind of valid. But maybe you could talk to your clients and tell them that the reality of soreness may be some upsides as well as downsides. So soreness can be useful. And here's how. If you never get sore in a muscle, let's say you train your side delts and never get sore, you might actually be growing as fast as possible. However, if you don't ever get sore and your pumps of that muscle are meh, your local fatigue is meh, like you train your side delts with five sets, and someone's like, you're really, you're really fried, they're tired, you're like, I don't know, they should feel normal, they feel the same. And if your muscle growth in that muscle hasn't been really progressing, you are probably understimulating. And a part of that evidence for understimulation can be the fact that you never or rarely or not much get sore. Thus, doing a bit more is likely to help. Now, here's an interesting question. What makes you sore? What makes people sore from training? A couple of top contenders. And these all work in concert or independently. Novelty. You do an exercise you haven't done before, train a muscle group you haven't trained, you're likely to get sore. Eccentric focus. If you normally drop your curls like this, but you learn to control the weight, not super slow, but just control it all, you get more sore. Higher volumes. Adding more volume generally makes you more sore. Low RIR. Going closer to failure makes you significantly more sore than stopping very shy of failure. Huge pumps maybe don't make you sore, but they sure as hell correlate. Like if you train your chest and your chest is like fucking pumped out of out of the fucking world, you're probably going to get sore uh, the next day. Deep stretch under tension is very likely to make you more sore than not. And a greater range of motion. Now, here's the thing. That list is like a fucking list from the scientific literature of what actually makes you grow or highly correlates to growth. So is more soreness better? Do we just want as much soreness as possible? Eh, hold up a sec. If you're getting sore, and especially if you're just barely recovering from the next session, let's say you train legs Monday, Thursday, quads. You get sore as fuck from the Monday session, and you just barely recover Wednesday night, Thursday morning to train them again, and then you just barely recover Sunday night to train them again. Stimulus is almost certainly not the problem. So if your quads aren't growing as fast as you want them to, Doing more shit is absolutely a terrible way to solve the problem because you're doing as much shit as you can recover from. More is not likely to help. And now adding growth to that equation is more a function of eating better or eating more, getting better recovery, getting better sleep, modulating frequency, et cetera, et cetera, exercise selection. It's not how hard your sessions are. So if you're getting fucking really sore from your sessions, you got 99 problems, but stimulus is not one of them. You probably need to work on your diet, your recovery, your sleep, uh, supplements, et cetera. It's probably not like, oh, I need to train harder. No way. And if you got all those things checked, you're getting sore regularly and you're still not growing as fast as you'd like, man, you're probably growing about as fast as you're going to be growing. What are the implications for this? If you never get very sore in a training a certain muscle that you want to grow, or you don't get sore at all, and that muscle is not growing nearly as well as the other muscles of your body, more is probably better. But the question is more of what? And the answer is more of what grows you slash makes you sore, which is really kind of the same list. So don't avoid the following and try to do a bit more of the following if you're not getting sore at all or not getting very sore and if you're not getting the kind of growth you want, which is to say more variation. Try some exercises you haven't done before. Maybe they can hit that muscle group better. To have an eccentric focus. Don't just drop the weights. Lower the weights under control. You'll probably get better results. Try a higher volume, marginally higher. Used to doing four sets, try five. Don't go to 10, some shit like that. Lower RIR, grind a little closer to failure. Maybe you're further from failure than you thought, and that's causing uh, both poor soreness and poor growth. Go for massive pumps. If you haven't, you know, you're like, oh, my biceps don't grow, and someone's like, do you get pumps? And you're like, what the fuck is that? Uh, you need to work on whatever strategy, a lot of these other ones, to get you more pumped. And work on deep stretch under tension. So if your pecs don't grow, but you've never done a deep fly, you do three sets of that shit. You're like, holy fucking crap. You get sore, you get growth. It's all good. And just a generally greater range of motion oftentimes does all these things. 
Lastly, if you're getting back-to-back -back sore consistently from training a muscle, more stimulus is almost certainly not the answer for better growth. So you're either getting all the growth you're going to get, you just have to be patient, or you can work on your diet and on your recovery and your sleep and your supplementation in order to get that equation up to standard and get you growing really well. Folks, give that some thought. Comments, questions below, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time.